my solution to the mask situation. I know it kind of makes me muted, but if I put this on, you can hear the wind howling here. It's the Holy Ghost.
at home watching, we just pray your blessing be upon the whole body of Christ. We pray, Father, that, Lord, you would be exalted, high and lifted in this place, that you would draw men, women, and children unto yourself because of your exaltation today. We ask, O oh Lord, today for all of the body of Christ, wherever they are gathered, Lord, here or in other provinces, we just pray for them today, that, God, that they would be uh, sensing your presence in a powerful way. We pray for this service, Lord. We pray for those that are coming and those that are here. We pray, Father God, that your name, Lord, as it is exalted, the Lord would drive away fear, would minister healing, will bring forth conviction, and do all the things that your Spirit desires to do in this service today. But we ask it in the matchless and mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, could you stand? I don't know what Ted has, but maybe you could stand for a little while. Um, you know, it's warmer as you stand up higher, but I don't know if that makes any difference. But the fans are blowing. And if you wish to stand, because this one is the name of the Lord, he is a strong and mighty tower. Amen. So sing it and give God the praise this morning. The name of the Lord. Yeah. Oh,
Thank you, Lord Jesus. This next song uh, is one that uh, Pastor Bruce and I decided to use at sort of the last minute. We had changed one of the songs I was going to do because we used it recently. But this is one that I sort of had on my heart. And then I found out that Pastor Bruce had met the person who wrote it. So I thought, that, yeah. that's interesting. Good brother. No one but you, Lord. Only you. Uh, you know? we, never, we never gave that one to you, brother. <laughs> Sorry. You may be seated if you need to be. Yes, sir. You want to warm? I was thinking this morning, my hair, I, I've got an appointment with a clipper this week. Uh, I look for a sheep shear or something, but uh, I, I was thinking my hair gets any longer, it looks like Charlton Heston playing Moses in the Ten Commandments, you know. No one but you, Lord, can satisfy the longing in my heart. Nothing I do, Lord, can take the place of drawing near to you. Only you.
Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, Lamb of God. Worthy is your name, O Lord. Amen. Worthy is your name. Praise be to God. His name is worthy. Praise the Lord. Bye. Amen. Well, his name is worthy. Somebody say amen. Or is amen. The, the mass too much for you. Anyways, we're glad that you're here. We're glad that he is here. He is worthy. He's the one that we're worshiping and the one that we're giving praise and glorifying his name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Ted. Bring you back up there in just a few minutes uh, after I've done preaching. So you know it's more than a few. Okay. Um, hey, Joseph. Good day. You know who you are. Uh, what's your friend's name? Introduce her. You don't know? Oh, I'm sorry. Kira. Kira. We want to welcome you, Kira, today to uh, see these people. We're only a small group, so it's okay. Don't be a don't be a bad, and uh, I, I did it to those two over there. So, uh, anyways, so we want to welcome you today, and in just a couple of minutes, whenever you feel free to go down. We do have Sunday school today, and so uh, you can go down to Sunday school. Uh, there is no offering in the sense of being passed around, but there are buckets on the way out the door uh, if you'd like to give your tithes and offerings in that particular way. So you're welcome to do that. As far as announcements are going. There we are, Saturday, July the 25th. There is a drive-in concert at the Sydenham Holiness Camp, Saturday night. And so the RMS Trio, we had them here a couple of weeks ago. And so they're going to be there. It's not very far from the drive. They live down the hill from the camp. So uh, they're, they're there. And so if you'd like to be participating in that uh, open air meeting, uh, some of you uh, that are watching are uh, still nervous about coming to the inside church. And so there's an opportunity for you that we offer as we participate together as Holiness Churches in having this opportunity for drive-in. We're going to have three drive-in services, concerts at Sydney Holiness Camp. And that's the first one uh, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Then also just a congratulations to the birth of, of uh, Juliet Sarah. And uh, I always spelled Juliet right. I don't know. I, that's just off the cuff. But Maybe, maybe you had the, the spell correct uh, with your mother-in-law there, uh, Rob. But anyways, I don't know. So anyways, we're glad that uh, they're out there and enjoying the presence of their new granddaughter. So praise be to God for that. Uh, that's one way to have church growth, all right? Have kids, all right? So um, although church growth to another church, but uh, they can't, it's a little bit hard to commute to, uh, from Calvary. And then, of course, uh, Sister Gwen uh, Simpson, recovering well in hospital after falling and breaking a hip. Um, and uh, so she's coming home on the 30th. I'm going to go get her and bring her home. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. But just uh, keep her in prayer. Others in prayer. We have Brother Sterling uh, that's recovering from a broken hip as well. We have people just up the road here. Another Simpson connection that is grieving the loss of their dad who passed away last Sunday and so um, keep them in prayer as well the family of Devin uh, Simpson uh, we have others that are have, have aches and pains and issues of life and that's why they're not here today so we want to keep the family of God uh, in prayer and just lift them up all right there's there another one I'm behind the glass there's more there's more there's more no that's my uh, sermon Oh, that's your sermon? <laughs> that's yeah, coming, brother. That's coming. So let's look to the Lord in prayer for uh, all of these needs today. And uh, some of you know the needs. Uh, some of you don't know the needs. Brother, uh, we're glad to have uh, Roger here. Roger, would you stand up right where you are? You may not know them, but uh, the Lord surely knows them. And just lift them up to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessing on our, uh, the offering and whatever the Lord puts on your heart today. Let's look to the Lord. Thank you, Brother Roger. Father, we want to praise you, yes, today, Lord God. Praise you. Father, I pray that each one here knows who you are mm -hmm. and how great you are and who we have in yes, Christ, Lord. Lord God. Praise you. That, that you have given us all authority in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes, Father, we just want to thank you. Praise you. Thank you for the, for the church gathered together, mm -hmm. Lord God. We just want to thank you, Lord God, mm -hmm. that we, we come here, Lord God, 
join together for those ones that couldn't make it, Lord mm. God. Yes, Lord. Father, I don't know, but Lord God, in the spirit, Lord yes, God, Lord. My, yes. my heart longs for them, Lord God. Mm. We just pray with your hand to be upon them, Lord God, mm. that you will, you, Lord God, will give them wisdom, give mm. them, uh, Lord mm. God, that you, Lord God, yes, will transform their minds, Lord yes, God, Lord. Father, yes, that they will know you better, Lord God. Yes, Father. Father, we just thank you for each one here, Lord mm. God, and Father, bless them, bless their offerings, Lord God, and for mm. your glory. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would somebody have a word of testimony today of what God has done in your life? Uh, we haven't taken that time to time, but I'd just like to know if you have a word of testimony. Give God the praise today. Harry has a testimony. Harry was here earlier evangelizing the neighborhood. Uh, so <laughs> he, put his, he put his Bible on the roof of the car, and the wind up here took all his sermon notes from somewhere else and scattered them throughout the, 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 the village. So I, I just say he was evangelizing. So anyways, they were chasing after the word this morning. So that was kind of a cute testimony. That's me testifying here. Does someone have a word of testimony? You've got the praise this morning. Glory. I do. Yes, sister. Well, we're very thankful. Um, I'm going to take this off so you Yes. There's, there, there's more than six feet away from the next person. Yeah, and I'm super healthy. Most of you know that we're building right now, and uh, we hit a lot of hurdles along the way, as you often do when you're doing a build. But I just want to give a special word of thanks to Josiah and Pastor, because our drywaller, six very men from Home Hardware, Atkinson's no less, uh, came and drove up, and they said they would not lift the drywall to the second level. So dear Pastor and Josiah, one other friend came, and myself, and Richard, of course, and we got all those boards up, and right now the house is completely boarded with this Bible. It's all so right. Thank God. All right. He has used our pastor and his son to be a huge blessing to our people. I can lift drywall. I offered, uh, you know, Brother Kenny here is going to help him with the roof if they don't get on. <laughs> he's he's going to put a roof on there this week, hopefully. So uh, we'll do whatever we got to do to visit. Because uh, in these strange days of COVID-19, you've got to find an excuse to get over and have, have a chat with people. So if you're doing anything physical around your house or whatever else, uh, just call on us. We'll be glad to come over. Josiah and I, when he's free now, but there's no program going on for him uh, in Perth. So uh, him and I are available to help out. So if you have uh, anything, also if you have pies that need eaten or uh, you know other things that need to be done, just sitting around. Anyways, that's my testimony there. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you, and, and God bless the, the, if you need to take them down, that's great. All right, let's look to the Word of God today. I hope you can hear me. Uh, you can see me, I guess, more or less. Um, if the, the heat gets too bad here, I'll turn that fan on again, but I found that maybe it's hard to hear. So um, just take a look, look at that. I do have some text of scripture that I will bring up uh, as we come along. And so uh, just keep your Bibles ready, ready and able, and then we'll bring them up. Let's look to the Lord in prayer again, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for thy word. Thy word is truth. Thy word is life. Thy word enables us, Lord, to accomplish the things that you desire us to do. Thy word, Lord God, is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Thy word guides us and directs us. Lord, your word brings us into greater light. We ask, O oh Lord, today that you would bless your word into our hearts and may your name be glorified. We also pray, Father, that all those that are watching and listening today, that the Spirit of the living God would take the word of God and transform each life as you desire to do. We thank you, Father, for the nation that we live in, and we pray, Father, for this nation. We pray for those struggling, those in fear, those that are isolated. I talked to some people this week that are very much isolated and lonely, and I just pray for them that, Lord, you would put them on our hearts to phone and to reach out to and to minister to them. Father, we pray again that you would, Lord, have your way amongst us. We pray for revival, starting right here, starting in this place, and starting with me, Father God, that you would revive my heart, O oh Lord, that I might be a blessing to the body of Christ 
and to those that are in need of the gospel. Lord, may my life, Lord, shine for you. And may, Lord, that transform into others as well. We ask these things in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. Now everyone say, Amen. 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 I want to get you primed to say amen. Between September 7th, 1940, and May 1941, a time known as the Blitzkrieg, or the London Blitz, German bombers dumped almost uh, 20,000 tons of bombs on the city of London. They also hit Coventry and, and Liverpool and Bristol and other places. Glasgow uh, also was hit once, and so was, uh, so was Belfast in Northern Ireland. But uh, primarily their target was London. In fact, the first blitz, they called it the blitz period of time, but there was a point when 57 days of continual bombing of the city of London in particular. Uh, 57 days. Imagine that. You know, having that fear over you all the time, every day, wondering when they're going to come, and they always come. When the sirens sounded, you had between seven and ten minutes to find shelter. There was no, I mean, radar was, I, I actually met and knew one of the developers of radar that was on the team that retired to Canada. It was a colonel who helped discover uh, radar, but at, at this early stage, there, the only way that they could give you much warning was they had people on the bluffs of uh, the coast of England, and when they saw or heard at night the planes coming over, then they would call ahead, and you would have between five and ten minutes to get your family out of bed, of course, many of the raids were at night, and get them into the basement or into a shelter. The shelters were, um, if you were able to, you had a shelter that you could go to, but oftentimes, several times, in fact, the shelters became targets of bombing, and so uh, it became a death threat. My mother-in-law has one of those, what we could call lucky ones. They live close to the tube, to the underground, to the subway, we would call it here. And uh, her father was in the military, but her mother was alone at home. And, and when those sirens would go off, she would get grabbed out of her pram, good English word, and uh, being hustled down the street and down into the underground where, uh, if you see that, and a couple of slides, or a couple of slides behind here, so um, just uh, go ahead, brother. Uh, there's the underground, where people would, uh, would gather together, they would sleep, uh, they would share uh, in, uh, in their stories, and they would share their food, and there would be, all, all, almost always, somebody would have an accordion or a, a, a fiddle or something, and there would be a kind of a rousing time of safety. In fact, it was so much so that uh, when the psychologists, they were concerned that there was going to be mass mental illness because of the sustaining, not only the 57 consecutive days, but the bombing that continued from uh, September through to May of the next year, they were thinking, they didn't call it PTSD back then, but they were thinking that there was going to be all kinds of mental issues because they had a lot of mental issues to deal with because of Dunkirk. The guys that were trapped for a couple of weeks on the beach of France, a lot of them suffered from a PTSD type of behavior. However, they found that there was very little mental illness results of it because people were cheering, encouraging each other. They were, they were, they, they were going through it together. They were not going through it alone, but they were going through it together. They were sharing, they were laughing, and they came out even stronger. This is what Adolf Hitler found, that even after the months and months of bombing, the resolve of the English people was even stronger after the bomb. They had found their safe place. Move the clock ahead a little bit to the 1950s and everybody was doing what? 
in their backyards. They were building their safe place. They were building their bomb shelters. Going to high school, I knew where the bomb shelters were in the town of Perth, even, even in my day and age. Designated place. They still had little signs for bomb shelters. Each village, each town had a place, and we had the siren still up there that they that they tried every now and then just to keep it going, you know, for, for warnings. But move the time ahead to 2020 with the social unrest in America. You know what the number one valued thing that rich people Y'all ain't rich, so you're not looking for these things, right? But the number one luxury item that people are looking for in a, in a house is a safe room. More than a pool, more than tennis courts, the rich are buying up houses that have panic rooms or safe rooms. In fact, one particular uh, company based out of Texas this past spring their business has went up 700%. As riots take place in America, and as things are going, it, it looks to this, this confusion of social unrest, people are building, buying, and putting in a safe room. People are not feeling safe in their own houses. A Vermont-based company, yeah, I threw in Vermont for you, brother, that serves New York City luxury homes notes this, that our clients feel secure in, no, sorry, our clients feel insecure with the level of protection that the police are able to give them as we draw closer to a U.S. election and ongoing social unrest. He's saying people don't even feel safe in their own homes. There, you know, there's no safe place. It's not enough to have a wall. It's not, to, not enough to live behind a gated community. It's not enough to arm yourself to the teeth, as many of our American friends do. They're saying that we still don't feel safe in our own homes. We're looking for a safe place. No longer are we, like we were in the 1950s, worried about some foreign power bombing us. Now we're worried about things happening right here. It's not from the outside, but it's from the inside. Friends, I ask you this question. Do you have a safe place? Is there a safe place for you? If you feel insecure in the things that are going on in this world, do you have a place to run to, a shelter to hide in? And I'm not talking about a bomb shelter in your back, a backyard or a, a, a stone basement. Have we done enough to make it safe here? Some people, listen, we have, we have a lot of people are not here today because they don't feel safe in the church. And I understand that. I'm not criticizing that. Have we made it safe enough? We have sanitizer out. We have, we have notices coming in. We have arrows on the floor. We have pews or chairs blocked off. We have plexiglass behind the preacher. All right. Have we made it safe enough? Not enough for some. It's never safe enough when fear is ruling in the heart. And King David was no stranger to adversity. He was weak. He had his own weaknesses. He had his own, his own misgivings. He had his own trouble. And we can read all about his trouble. There was real danger that he faced. In fact, people were out to get him. It wasn't just paranoia. It was real. David had people out to get him. People that wanted him dead. And at times he would find safety. His panic room was caves in the mountains of Judea, where there's plenty of caves. When Saul was after him, when the Philistines were after him, when different ones that were after him to kill him and take his life, when his own son rose up in a rebellion against him, all kinds of times he didn't feel safe, he needed a place to go to. But the real security and the real safety that he turned to was not a cave necessarily in the wilderness, but it was the Lord. Ultimately, he found that running away and hiding from your enemies is not the answer. The safe place is running to the Lord. Psalm 61, verse 3 says this. For you, O Lord, are my refuge. 
This particular version says my shelter. One version says my safe place. You, O oh Lord, are my shelter. You are my refuge. You are my bomb shelter. You are my panic room. You are my safe place. You are a strong tower against the enemy. The name of the Lord is a strong tower in another psalm, which we sang this morning. And the righteous run to it. They're not running away from their enemies. They're running to Christ. He knew what he was talking about. He understood what fortifications were when he referred to the Lord as his strong tower. He understood what a fortification was, the importance of a tower in defending a city. In those days, of course, there were fortified towers around about the city and different places and towns to be able to a place to run to for safety. A place where people could get up and get an advantage over the enemy because, number one, you could see the enemy coming a lot quicker if you were up a tower. And if you were higher than the enemy, then you had a tactical advantage because you could throw stuff down on the enemy. It's always easier to shoot down than it is to shoot up. And if you were a watchman, it was a better place to be on a tower where you could have a better vantage point, where you could warn people, where you could prepare yourself better for what was coming. Friends, are you prepared for what's coming? What are you saying, preacher? What's coming? I don't know what's coming next. I don't know what 2020 is going to dish out again. But I know who I have my trust in. I have my safe place. So whatever happens, I know where I can run to. I'm not going to run away. I'm going to run to. I'm going to run to Christ. In Christ. That is our safe place. In the new covenant, our understanding is made more complete because in Christ is our shelter. Uh, David had an understanding. He had an idea. The name of the Lord. I run to Him. I run to Christ. As new covenant believers, we are in Christ. That is our safe place. In Christ. That little word in means an awful lot. You're either in or you're out. I mean, in the bomb shelters in London, you were either in or out. Made a big difference. And today it makes an awful big difference whether you are in Christ or you are out of Christ. I want to give you one text of Scripture, Ephesians chapter 1. I want to give you a little test. I want you to count how many... Oh, you don't like tests, sorry. Uh, Martha just retired from public education, so uh, sorry to throw the word test at you. But, you know, there's a little test. Just count how many times the little word in is used in this passage. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to verse 14. Okay, a big text of Scripture, but I'm sure you can handle that much reading of the Word of God. All right? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 says this. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful who are in Christ Jesus. Mark it down, that's what. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Where do you get the blessings? In Christ. For he, for he chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will to the praise and glorious grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made us known to us the mysteries of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Christ. To be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and, and, and earth under Christ. In Him 
we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with the seal. You were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of His glory. Long text of Scripture to read. Now, how many ends did you get? Did you count them? If you got... Okay, there's... the. If you got 10, there's, oh, there's 11 if you really want to go for it. 11. Uh, but 10 are actually in references to our position in Christ. In one passage of Scripture, Paul gives 10 times the fact that here is the safe place. In Christ. We are called to be faithful in Christ. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. God chose us in Christ. God has freely given us grace in Christ. We have redemption and forgiveness of sins in Christ. God has made known the mysteries of His will in Christ. We are chosen in Christ. We have our hope put in Christ. We are included in Christ. We are marked in Christ with the seal of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. This is the ultimate safe place, friends. This is the safe place for the believer. Do you realize that you're in Christ? When you listen to the news, when you get fearful from what all is going on in this world, do you forget that you are in Christ? You're already in your safe place. So don't run away. Stay secure right where you are. We are automatically in Christ when we come and accept Christ as our Savior. But sometimes we don't live like it. We don't realize. We think it's maybe for somebody else. Oh, there's some real secure Christians out there. No, that's to be you. He wants you to be secure in Christ. It's not for somebody else. I, I took a tour of the Diefen bunker over at Carp just outside of Ottawa with my seniors uh, a couple of years ago. And, uh, and there is the Diefen bunker. This wonderful, you can go take a tour of it. It's a great uh, experience to see how things were back in the late 50s. To, to see how the precautions were there, the, the, the uh, implementation of the program to save who? Everybody? No, I'm sorry. The Prime Minister had a room. <laughs> he, some of his cabinet, not all of them, but some of his cabinet had rooms. Some of the chief echelon in the military, they had a place there. The rest of you were going to fry. <laughs> Sorry. You know, if a, if a nuclear bomb hit, I mean, I couldn't save everybody. You know, it was only for a few. It was only for the select. It was only for the elite. But this offer of safety that comes in Christ is open to everybody. All you got to do is run to the shelter. All you got to do is call on His name. Being in Christ is a place where, you're, where the spirit and soul can find peace even if the body is undergoing some attack. Right? Let's look at this. How high is the tower? A couple of scriptures. Here's one. How high is the tower? If you're looking at being in Christ, how protective, how safe are we being in Christ? <clears throat> Actually, one of the reasons why a tower brings peace and security to a city is because it gives you that better vantage point over the enemy. Our, tire, our tower is high above the bombardment of the enemy. Ephesians 2 and 6 says what this? He says, and he hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. That's our tower. Our tower is so high that we can look down on the enemy. Amen? 
Don't look out. The enemy says, no, no, sit up here with Christ and look down and get a better perspective. Many of the tactical moves that have happened in history in wars were called faux. Uh, faux moves, They're coming from the French false, I guess, I think. You know, a, 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 fo a faux flanking, a faux this, or doing this and that. Trying to get the other side to think that the major group of the army is coming this way, and so they rally their, rally their uh, armaments in this side, and the reality is that the enemy's coming in this side. You don't get that when you're in Christ in a heavenly place, because you can look down and see all the tactics of the enemy for what they really are. Lies. You, from the place in the heavenly place, you can look down in Christ and you can say, oh, oh okay, I see what he's up to. All right. Uh, that nasty old devil. He's going to try and trick God's people with that again. I'm not buying it. Even when other people are buying and even when people are running in terror and for fear, of the, if you're in a place of security, if you are in Christ, and you're looking down, you're saying, oh, okay, that's what's really happening. God's got this. Isn't it good to know that God's got it? You will always find when you're in the seated with the hip in the heavenly places in Christ that if you are in that secure position in Christ, when you look down on the situation from his perspective, our perspective is from the CNN's perspective, from the global perspective, I'm talking about the television station, you know, from the world's perspective, it is a little, it, they don't got the good perspective, but where God is, if we can get his perspective and look down, we say, okay, God's got this. All right. Yeah, that's a, it's a high tower. How close is our tower? Well, here's what the scripture says in Psalm 145. He says this, the Lord is, how close? <laughs> he is near. He is very near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. My mother-in-law, I was saying, was, you know, uh, between five and ten minutes away from the subway uh, with a frantic mother running through the street, I'm sure. Uh, she was close to that safety. If you were 15 minutes away, you had to find another place because you didn't want to be on the street running to a safe place and the bombs were dropped. You had to find a different place. Uh, friends, I want to guarantee you today that if you call on the name of the Lord, that safety is right there, that you're right there. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord. He is there for you. Uh, you just, he's that, he's, there's an old song. I'm sure I'm getting old songs. He's as close as the mention of his name. Jesus, Jesus, he's as close as the mention. Of his name. I haven't sung that in a long time. It just floats to the surface sometimes. He's as close as the mention of his name. That's how close. There is no issue of distance with the Lord. Even when you find yourself, oh, you've gotten away from the presence of God. You things have happened in your life that has brought distance between you and the Lord. And you go and the enemy is coming and the air raid sounds. Am I going to get there? I feel distance between me and the Lord because I haven't been, I haven't been doing my devotions. I haven't been, a, I haven't been praying. I, I've been getting away from that. I have this distance. I don't know if I can make it to the shelter. I'm not sure whether I'll, I'll have time to get there. No. Call on the Lord. And He's there. Isn't that wonderful? You all have been there, haven't you? Because I've sure been there. I looked across the field and said, I don't I can't make it that far. I see the enemy coming, I see what's happening in my life, and I I got a lot of distance between me and the Lord right now. How am I going to and you pray and you're there? Because God just like like the like Philip when he was 
for each of the Ethiopian unit, and he had to go somewhere else, and he just zoom, he was there. How secure is our tower? The last thing. Oh, how secure is it? In Christ is a fortress. In Christ is an impenetrable, I said it all together, didn't I? Impenetrable place from the enemy's perspective. You can jump off the wall if it, you know, if you're nuts. But as far as the enemy coming at you, it is an impenetrable fortress. Here's what Paul had to say. He actually said, I, I sometimes, I just did it wrong, didn't I? When I quote this scripture, sometimes I say what? When Paul actually said, who? Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ? What shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or family or COVID-19 or nakedness or peril or unrest or sword? You can go on and on. You can put in whatever you need. He says this, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing. He throws that in. I'll just throw in the last thing. I'm just going to throw the kitchen sink into the whole thing. Anything that is created, amen, shall be able to separate us from the love of our God. The love of God, which is, where do you find it? Where's that safe place? Where's that panic room? Where's that bomb shelter? It is in Christ. Our Lord. Friends, do you have a safe place? I, I say to all those that are watching today, are you in Christ? All you need to do is call on the name of the Lord for salvation. Are you afraid? Are you worried? Are you concerned about what's going on in this world? Absolutely, you should be. Absolutely, you should be concerned. You should not necessarily worry because that's a sin, but you should be concerned about what's going on. Do you feel secure? Do you feel safe? It all links to your relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know I'm talking to people today that are, 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 are watching the news and are concerned about things, and I'm not trying to poo-poo the reality of bad stuff going on, right? Not poo-pooing it at all. But I am saying that I've got a place. I've got a secure place. I'm in Christ. He is a high tower. He is a safe place. And I recommend him to you today. Amen. I want to look you in the eye today. <laughs> Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? I want to close with prayer, and I want to pray for you today that you may find that answer in Christ. Would you pray with me today? Those that are here, pray. It's Sister Martha, if you would come to the piano this time in Christ alone. Father, I pray for those that are watching and listening today. I, I, I just I want to pray for them that everybody that is under the sound of my voice is in the shelter and in place. The sirens of this world are raging. The alert has gone out. And we know that our time is limited. And so the call to come into the shelter has gone forth. And we pray that everyone there, under the sound of my voice, is safe and inside. And if they are not, Father, I pray for them today that they would get in the shelter. Father, I pray for them today that they would come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus is knocking on their door right now. He is saying, let me in. I want When I'm in you, then you are in me and you have a safe place. Just call on the Lord and say, Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me for my sin. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and there's no way I can get to heaven without you. I repent of my sins and I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and personal Savior. I'm letting you in so that I can get into you. 
Father, today there are Christians that are watching today or here today who even though they have accepted Christ as their Savior, they have allowed the sirens of this world to put fear in their hearts, to terrify them. And Father, I pray for them that they might call the Lord and get into the shelter. May they be reminded today that in Christ is a safe and secure place. We rebuke fear in Jesus' name. We rebuke the devil's work and tools against the body of Christ in Jesus' name. And we pray, Father God, the Lord, as we sit in the heavenly places with you in the power of Christ, Give us and grant us that perspective that is above all the fray of this world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let's sing the song. In Christ, let's stand, shall we, to sing it this morning. In Christ alone my hope is found. That first line right there says it all, doesn't it? Amen. In Christ alone my hope is found.
we thank you and praise you for all that you have done for each one of us. We yes, thank Lord. you for the service this morning. We thank you for your word as it went forth. And we pray that as we go from this place, be mindful that you go with us. Mm. And we are in your hands always. Yes, Lord. Remembering in Christ we do stand. Mm. And in his name we go forth. In mm. Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you today. Go with God. Amen. Thank you.